Welcome to my lecture series on harmonic distortion. Today's video 9. Slide numbers will be in the bottom right hand corner. This is about the third harmonic. The, everything we covered in the second harmonic video we're going to cover again. The same process, same math, but I'm going to show you all my work. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the various steps, but I want to show you what a third harmonic does to a signal, which is typical of any odd harmonic. So evens and odds work differently. So in video six, we talked about the, the IP, the instantaneous plate current, is equal to a derivative uh, expression, GMVG, which is sine omega t. And we can take the first, second, third, fourth derivative in order to calculate our harmonics. I've covered the fundamental in video five. Video seven, I covered the second harmonic today I'm going to spend some time on the third harmonic when you look at this equation the thing I want to point out to you is that here here are the power formulas for sine squared sine cubed sine fourth sine fifth when you look at this don't look at them in terms of their power but look at this sine squared is equal to 2 omega cosine 2 omega t sine cubed minus sine 3 omega t sine fourth 4 omega, 5 omega. There's a pattern here. It looks like this. So back on my inductive load line, I talked about uh, this and I introduced it on the yeah the inductive load line video three. I introduced this. So when you take a a picture and you multiply it by j, the imaginary number, what you're actually doing is shifting the angle of the picture. It just keeps going over and over. One simple operation: multiply everything by that. Uh, J factor, the imaginary number, you're actually changing it 90 degrees. So if if you have if you want to integrate sine, you go uh, counterclockwise. The first integral sine is minus cosine. The first derivative of sine is cosine. The second derivative would be minus sine. Everything goes around the circle. That's why I like ca calculating in sines and cosines. What goes around comes around. In terms of harmonics, it's the same thing. So if I start with my fundamental frequency at sine omega t, and I'm looking for a harmonic term, I go around counterclockwise. So the second harmonic is going to be minus cos 2 omega t, or sine 2 omega minus pi on 2. Third harmonic, fourth harmonic, fifth harmonic, sixth harmonic. So the reason I calculate through the fourth harmonic is that there's the, the because of this pattern. I'm not going to go into the other uh, order harmonics, but you get a pattern here. So we don't actually after the fourth harmonic uh, calculation that I'll show you. There's no point really to going into any more calculations because we now have a pattern and we can then deduce what a seventh or eighth or nth harmonic is based on the pattern. We can get to the terms. It's that easy. So we've solved for this in the last. We're introducing this in this video. We need to expand this term. So rather than repeat all this work, we just need to add this. And that's how you approach this. So in the fourth one you would just add probably well, you would you just add the fourth term. So we do that and we expand that out. And this is where it starts getting messy. So we expand that out, we get this, we combine terms, and then we have to do our power reduction again because we don't want cubes and squares. So we put those in and we get what we have at the bottom, we got that cosine term again, and we're going to have to start changing things. But now we need a group like terms. So here's our DC offset, here's our fundamental because it's omega t. Here's a second harmonic, which is anything to omega t, any term with that in it, whether it's sine or cosine, is the second order harmonic. Anything with three omega t is the third harmonic. Here's the third harmonic. So we have our second order terms, and now we have their third order terms, and we just need to add them together. And so we do that. So in any the next, you know, 
order terms of fourth, fifth. We, we sort of do the same thing over and over and over again. I'm going to stop at the fourth harmonic. I'm going to just make that clear. I'm going to explain why I don't really care what the fourth harmonic is in that video. That's why. Uh, but we have enough data now to get to the tube efficiency, plate power, THC percent harmonics. Things that make a change to the design of the guitar and stereo amp. The fifth harmonic is not going to you know, warm my heart one way or the other, neither will the fourth. But I want to run that one down the hole for you. So we combine our terms and we got this cosine. I want to convert that again to sine. We know what these identities are. And when we do that, we, everything's converted. Here's I mean, which is I zero, the DC rectification. So here's the five things I showed in the second order harmonic video. One, I mean, this is I sub zero, and no current with no signal. This is now the DC rectification. The third order harmonic adds to the harmonic uh, DC rectification. Here is now my first harmonic, or the, I'm sorry, the fundamental. There's now some cube terms in there. Again, it has altered the amplitude. This subtracts, these add. Does it really? Well, math says it does. Does it affect it much? We'll see. And then 5. So I've got 5A, which is second order harmonic. 5B, which is a third order harmonic. These comprise the unwanted signal, the harmonic. Here's my DC offset. The first terms are I sub zero. The next terms are the, D, are the rectification terms, so we're going to call that I mean. Fundamental, second, third. When we look at the second order harmonic, I told you it changes the asymmetry and that is correct. That's principally what an even harmonic does. It changes the, cement, the symmetry. The third order harmonic doesn't change the symmetry. It, it's, it doesn't make it asymmetrical. It changes the peaks because the way it's, it's out of phase, if you will, with the fundamental and the second. I don't show the second here. This is just print the fundamental in the third, but it'll flatten out the peak and flattens out the minimum side. Maximum, minimum, I hate using those terms, but up in here is what, is what we should call this. This maximum value gets flattened out, this minimum value gets flattened out. So odd order harmonics flatten it out. They don't change the symmetry of the frequency. When we put the second order in, this is what we get. So we have uh, the peaks are flattened out a little bit because the third order is asymmetrical because the second order. And we've got this dimple now. Which is why I say in the second order harmonic, I don't like talking about max and mins much because this is not a min. It is I270. So we need to calculate this as we've done before. So we need to rewrite this equation. So H1 is going to represent this complex term as we've found, H2, H3. So every time you calculate a harmonic, it makes the fundamental coefficient much more complex. It makes a mess of it. So the first, the fundamental coefficient is a mess, and then the H2 is a little mess, and H3, third harmonic, is not much of a mess, but it's still a mess. I mean becomes more complex, and you're going, whoa, the world's lost here. But we don't have to worry about that. So again, let's take, let's look at this. This is I90. We're going to I also have 270. We're not changing those points, but I need two more points because I'm going, I've added another harmonic. I need another equation. So I, I chose, chose, to have I-135 and I-225. And the reason for that is, as I set my equations up, I know that at 135, the second order harmonic is zero. And at 225, the second harmonic uh, order is zero. The coefficient will be zero. 
Now I still have to deal with the amplitude of the fundamental on the third, but the second goes away. That's key. So it's not capricious in the way to set those. I set it for a reason. I want to make it easy on me. And when you do math and you do engineering, you want to find a way to solve the solution and make the math as easy as possible. Take the stress off of me so I can get the job done. No need making it comp any more complex than it needs to be. So I90 is equal, again, I mean plus H1 plus H2 minus H3 because H3 is going negative. I135, I mean, is positive. H1 is positive. H, uh, H2 is zero, the second order is zero. Aha, da da. And then third is going to be uh, positive. But these aren't peak values, so we've got a problem. So what we do is we know that the sine of 135, which is that, the y component, the sine of 135, is equal to h1 over square root of 2. 1 over square root of 2 is 0 0.707, which is the sine of 135. Similarly, sine of 45, same sort of thing. So we want to find these out. So there's this point. Um, so it's 45 degrees. Let's see, 135 here is 45 on the third order. So you add those together, we got that equation. For 225, is similar. This time they're negative in value. When we look at the sign that, you know, associated with the first, with the fundamental and the third order, it's going to be minus 1 over square root of 2 and minus 1 over square root of 2. And H2 is 0. For 270, we have H1 plus H2 plus H3. Or actually, H1 is minus and plus I mean. So these are my four equations that I need. Now we can go about solving this. So now we have these four equations. We have four unknowns. We've got to calculate I mean as well. So here's how we set up. So we're going to take one and four and we're going to add and subtract those things in order to uh, reduce terms. And in this case we want to get rid of H2. And then we add and subtract equation six which we calculate here, we do the same thing, and then we can eliminate and get down to and solve for H1. Now we have H1, and we can solve for H3. And when we look at that, we can then take the ratio of H3 over H1 times 100, and you have your percent third harmonic. Similarly, we add 2 and 3 together, and we get a new equation, adds 1 of 4, get a new equation, subtract these two, and we've solved for the second order harmonic. So their job's done. And we know that I mean is 135 over 220, I-225 divided by 2, because we get that from equation 7. Now we have H2, H1. This is multiplied by 200 again because the way the math works out is 2h2 over 4h1 times 100, which is this. Here's a third order harmonic. Again, we have to pick our, our angles, but again, just like in the second order harmonic, we, can, we know where 135 is, we know where 225 is, because we can calculate the sine of that angle and pick those four points off. So we know where they are here, we know where they intersect the grid line, we can pick the, the currents off and we do our calculation. Next up, why I don't worry about the fourth harmonic. I'm going to calculate it, but I'm going to show you why I just really don't worry about it. But it's because of the math, not because of an opinion. Thank you for watching.